Good morning, everyone. Outside in is a session that uh, we have been holding on since the lockdown. As the name suggests, it is meant to give the outside world a view of what goes on in the lab. And it's really meant for high school students and young adults, but sometimes not so young adults also do participate. So we've been having this. Uh, and in the beginning, we have had uh, experts in the field of ecology introduce different topics. And uh, for the past uh, three months, what we have been doing is to dwell on one topic for one month. And uh, this month it's on aquatic organisms. And uh, I've been ably co-hosted by uh, Dr. Samir Padye of the Biologica um, in uh, Pune. And uh, so I would uh, like to hand over uh, to Samir, please. Thank you, Sadhamini. So uh, welcome everyone. So today's talk is by Dr. Karthik. He works as a scientist at the Agarka Research Institute in Pune. He works on a group of microorganisms which are quite ubiquitous. So they're found everywhere. But surprisingly, not much scientific information is known about them. So he is an expert on identification and distribution of these animals. So without wasting further time, uh, I would like, uh, I would request Dr. Karthik to start his talk. Uh, <coughs> thanks, Amir. Thanks, Sadamani and uh, uh, the Inside Out uh, team. I will start the talk. Just a minute. Okay. start now. <clears throat> a very good morning to all and uh, my name is uh, Karthik. I work as a scientist at Agarka Research Institute in Pune. Uh, so uh, today my topic will be on looking at the uh, living glass houses. So when I spent almost uh, 10 years in uh, Bangalore. So you know the for I even though this uh, uh, the people who are attending this talk will be all over the world, uh, but most of them, I suppose, are from Bangalore. So the moment uh, any Bangalorean, uh, when we say that glass houses, uh, they will think about uh, uh, these glass houses. This is like, uh, I think, more than 150 year old glass houses uh, uh, located in Lalbagh, so which is very famous for the flower show. So, but. Uh, there is no life associated with the glass. So it's a, it's a artif it's a, you know, it's an artificial structure made with the glass. But today, what we are going to do is like uh, we are going to look into this uh, these glass houses. Uh, they are um, uh, having a life. So this is what we are going to look at it. So when we when we go more in detail into these glass houses, we will. Uh, uh, they are the one of the mu most uh, beautiful sculptural structures. They are living organism, by the way. It's not like you know man-made structures or something like that. Uh, to uh, to um, uh, made up of uh, silica cell walls. So these are uh, these structures are called as like diatoms. So. Uh, if you see this slide, you will see this, uh, you know, uh, there is a life in that. The evidence for the life is this internal content where there it's having uh, uh, chloroplast and other cell organelles, which are all, uh, so make them to do photosynthesis and uh, all other routine art activities. Uh, these diatoms are, uh, they are a microscopic plant. So when you see a tree or a 
uh, plant outside they are also the same thing but with the uh, they are microscopic in size so uh, when we see the tree of life where do we put uh, these diatoms in uh, they they come under the uh, group called algae so we all uh, almost uh, everybody see this algae uh, though if we look at in a uh, you know, river or a stream or a lake we will see this green color growth all over this place it's uh, uh, nothing but algae <clears throat> per se algae is a uh, you know very um, huge uh, group with with a lot of different characters just to mention one um, in size they can be in the in few micron even less than 10 micron to 300 400 meters also so you can uh, on your left side you are seeing a macro algae seaweed uh, which is um, uh, uh, which can which is uh, which can run under the ocean floor for 200 300 uh, meters on the other hand you are seeing a, a blue green algae which is uh, very small in size so in you know when we when you try to uh, see the where exactly the um, uh, diatom fit into the entire tree of life so here just pay attention to this uh, uh, green uh, round which is like all our land plants like all trees ferns everything put together here and this red circle is the animals and then this yellow you see these, these are uh, uh, diatoms so in this left uh, branch we see this huge uh, you know uh, a, a sudden uh, a, a branch with a lot of uh, things which is like uh, uh, different groups of algae basically uh, there are different groups of algae here Uh, from diatoms, dinoflagellates, uh, red algae, brown algae, everything are here. Um, so uh, these are uh, just a minute. I'll just close my window. It's very a lot of crows here. Just a minute. Sorry. Suddenly, there are so many uh, crows came next to my window. They started calling loud. So, <clears throat> uh, when we see the number of taxa in each this group, each this algae, uh, each of this branch in under algae, there are uh, we can find uh, uh, equal number. Like you know, each branch under this group have like literally tens and thousands of. Uh, Uh, species of algae are there so what makes diatom special when we see they are uh, unicellular in like single cell and they are golden in brown in color because of their pigments and their uh, skeleton is made with two walls so on your right you see a, a base and a lid which is nothing but it's like a soap box so you can uh, easy way to remember a structure of diatoms like soap box so you have a lid and you have a base and the soap is the cell content like that <coughs> so uh, uh, they live uh, either singly like here you are seeing a single cell sometime what happen many cell put together to form a uh, you know a big colony like you know you will see a, a, a chain of a, a, Uh, a, a, a lengthy chain of uh, 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 diatom you'll see and they reproduce very rapidly like you know in few minutes we can see like uh, they one one become two one then one and then further you know? and usually they occur in any wet place not necessarily in a lake or a river or a uh, marine or a ocean environment even there is some little moisture on your wall or um, Uh, on a stone uh, you know everywhere uh, 
if there is a little wetness moisture is there even on the soil you will find diatoms growing there uh, provided that you know a wide variety of uh, environment from hot spring boiling hot spring to 70 80 degrees celsius of water to you know uh, ice diatoms live also inside this ice so we can uh, uh, in any any parameter when we take diatom leaves across the gradient uh, for example if we keep like a salt concentration as a gradient we will find diatom in the like you know marine heavy or even like a, um, salt water uh, springs to you know pure water but only thing is all this different a gradient of environment have a different set of species that's what uh, makes diatom as a environmental specific and that's what make diatom as a very species very rich in number of species so you have a huge number of like literally tens of thousands of species are there in diatom so uh, and they are since they are environmental specific by looking at diatom you can tell whether what kind of water it would have origin this comes from a uh, clean water this comes from a uh, polluted water this comes from a hot spring this comes from a ice or it comes from a cold water spring so we can easily tell that uh, by looking at the diatom so uh, usually the uh, the size of the diatom is like few uh, micron the biggest diatom goes up to like 300 400 micron and uh, here you are seeing like uh, you know the both valve i was mentioning they put apart like you know instead of being like this they were like you know uh, put it like this under the uh, scanning electron microscopy uh, and uh, each species when i mentioned there are known species are like 50000 plus each species have its own unique uh, cell wall pattern the cell wall uh, have uh, its own uh, sculpture like you know when you see uh, in the bottom left picture so you will see all this uh, you know pores and then st silica structures on it it's a species specific so each species have its own uh, structure that taxonomist be taxonomist use them for a identification so uh, <clears throat> i in all my talk i always mention this diatoms are microorganism with a macro function you know uh, uh, what is that macro function is uh, 25 globe on earth uh, 25% of oxygen produced by diatoms so almost every fourth breath we take the oxygen comes exclusively from uh, diatoms and we always uh, from our school textbooks uh and general textbooks we always we were always told uh, plant make uh, oxygen of course plants land plants also make the oxygen but nearly 50% of the oxygen comes from this, this unknown group called algae among algae almost uh, half of it like that is like 25% of global oxygen are produced by this uh, uh, you know uh, very lesser known group of organism called diatom so you know uh, that's why they are uh, one of the most important group uh, in terms of ecosystem service in terms of uh, uh, very relevant to humans uh, on your left you are seeing this uh, chain like uh, uh, diagram which um, uh, dates back to 1703 uh, uh, this is the first uh, official record of somebody noting diatom Uh, from um, from uh, england uh, mr c wrote this paper in royal society of london transaction journal uh, uh, 1700 was the 1703 was the first time we found diatom and then immediately uh, as the this gentleman you are seeing on the right side ember he is the first one to study diatom from india he is in his uh, Uh, monumental work on this microgeology uh, 1854 uh, some through maybe through some colonial connection uh, he got uh, samples from different part of the india particularly west coast brahmaputra malabar so all these places were highlighted here like pondicherry mangalore and then uh, he produced his uh, work uh, i think india's first uh, observed microorganism or diatom because i don't think anybody observed any microorganism from india before uh, 1854 so i we can say this and uh, 
this is some something very interesting called victorian diatom art like you know there are some expert microscopic expert they will pick individual diatom and then they will arrange it and then they make so in in this uh, owl picture whatever you are seeing it's all individual diatom they are all organized to make this pattern and then on the right side which is something equivalent to our rangoli uh, you, what you are seeing here so it's all like you know individual diatoms were uh, arranged under the microscope by a uh, expert so even nowadays also the slides are available uh, for we can buy that for like maybe couple of thousands of pounds um, uh, so this is uh, interesting about diatom in common man's life so coming back to diatom we know more than 50000 diatom as on today and the estimated is 2 million yes we we have a lot of uh, work to do as i mentioned they are like a extremely diverse group in terms of morphology in terms of environment and they have many valuable products from omega 3 fatty acid to biofuel etc we'll see those things at the end so where to look for diatom how they look they always are uh, grow attached to a stone or a, or a plants or like to a moss or even uh, uh, as a um, in in between the sediment when we see in in detail like you know you see the stones and there are some brown color growth on this uh, stone they are uh, they are diatoms and uh, here also you can notice that this tadpoles uh, eating uh, uh, these diatoms <coughs> and here you can see this uh, uh this aquatic plant roots are filled with uh, diatoms and here you see a uh, uh, dead wood inside a stream uh, covered with this brown diatom growth and under the like you know bottom of the stream there is like you know uh, here you see this uh, brown growth uh, so we collect um, diatom using this piper like uh, structure so if you pay attention to this uh, uh, brown color like you know hair like growth on the roots of this aquatic plants or the leaf <coughs> excuse me so they are all um, uh, diatom so when we pick uh, the sample from the environment and we when we look under the microscope they look like this you know they look like uh, there's a uh, uh, these are all individual diatoms uh, photographed and then arranged uh, in a software so that you know to see the uh, entire uh, morphological diversity in one particular group so but uh, if you notice here uh, we here we don't see any of those siliceous structures so what we do when we get the samples so on your left and under the field collection category we see like you know different environment we bring it to the lab basically we cook the diatom so we take a beaker put our sample put hot nitric acid uh, hydrochloric acid and we boil them in the, in the hot plate so basically what happen all organic material get cooked like get you know it's all get digested only inorganic parts remain so diatoms are as i mentioned before diatoms are made up of silica and the silica cell wall are the uh, each diatom have unique Uh, cell wall pattern so those cell wall patterns are used for identification so whatever we are seeing on the left side it was before uh, cleaning with the uh, acid on your right side we are seeing uh, the same species now we can see in detail more in detail uh, structural details like my, uh, like how this uh, central line is how, what is the size of this Uh, you know this rectangular area how the wall vents all those things we can see more clearly the same thing when we look under the scanning electron microscope we, we see a little bit uh, more uh, uh, in detail structure of the uh, the cell wall structure so uh, as i mentioned uh, sometime before diatoms are like a uh, like a uh, soap box so when you see like soap box like this so we need to document the what is the outside structure external structure and also what is the in, when we open the soap box how it looks like internally so these characters we look into to uh, uh, describe them 
as a species so on your left what you are seeing is external structure on your right what you are seeing are the internal structure um, even though uh, we know uh, diatoms for quite long time from 1700 uh, uh, you know the, if you see this graph it's like a discovery rate of diatom so literally every almost every day we have uh, people describing new species of diatom from different part of the world uh, initially it was mostly from europe and north america then later uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, tropical and other part of the world also uh, have um, a lot of new diatomists uh, started describing more and more new species. So <clears throat> in our lab, uh, we work on uh, diatom uh, uh, across the country, but like with primary focus on the uh, biodiversity hotspot. Uh, if you see here, most of our samples are either from Western Guards or Northeastern uh, India. So we study diatom from uh, these places. Uh, one one thing, as I mentioned earlier, like you know, diatoms are um, uh, kind of uh, extreme. Uh, it's extremo phyllic organism, so it can range from you know sweet water to extremely salt water, cold ice to hot uh, uh, hot water like that. Here we, uh, I just want to say, like you know, in in Maharashtra, like 200 kilometer from Pune, we have a crater lake, Lonar Crater. So this pH of the uh, the water of the crater is more than nine, which is like extremely alkaline. On the other hand, uh, in the Meristica swamps of uh, Kerala, we have alk uh, acidic uh, water. It's like uh, pH is uh, less than five. Uh, pH water is there. So we find diatom from in case of uh, uh, alkaline water also, in case of acidic water also. The only thing is they are uh, restricted to uh, only to that environment. We might not find the alkaline um, diatom in acidic or, or other way around. Similarly, we have we, we can find uh, new species of diatom or we can report diatom from uh, uh, pure environment like where there is no human presence to polluted environment uh, you know we even described a new species of diatom from uh, uh, in the middle of the uh, city in pune where there is like all the river the river completely turned into a um, sewage uh, water drainage so almost uh, 40 percent of the taxa what we encounter are new so we we keep uh, describing new species of diatom uh, every now and then. So uh, our lab have described more than 50 new species of diatoms and then two new genera till today. And we are working on more than like another 200, 300 species will be coming in uh, coming days. This is a, a, a new genus Klukoviskia we described from the lateritic uh, rock pools of the uh, Western Ghats. Apart from the uh, aquatic environment, like we, I was telling about river, streams, lake, uh, we recently found out diatoms can also grow along the moss uh, and the tree, particularly where there is no uh, hydraulic link, uh, there is no uh, uh, you know, uh, linkage between the uh, stream or a lake to a tree moss. So uh, from these moss, we found um, many uh, uh, unique diatoms growing. Uh, uh, we call this as like a, uh, aerophilic diatoms, like how uh, acidophilic is acidic loving, alkalophilic is alkaline loving. We found this aerophilic uh, diatom. So diatoms are used as a bioindicator. As I mentioned, uh, uh, diatoms can uh, uh, grow from any any environment but they are restricted to that environment only. A group of species you find in alkaline water, they will find, you can find them only in alkaline water. So you don't find them elsewhere. So by looking at diatom, we can tell uh, whether it is a clean water or a polluted water, acidic water, alkaline water. So <clears throat> uh, 
uh, one uh, we use we take advantage of this uh, environmental indicator plus uh, silica cell wall to tell earth's past history for example in this picture if you see uh, this uh, you know uh, somebody had put this uh, uh, message in this bottle uh, which is like dated to be 103 year old message uh, you know why uh, we could uh, get this message even today is because it's uh, this it's written in a piece of paper and this paper is put in the bottle and then sealed so bottle will never degrade like it will remain there for years together like thousands of years at least because it's made up of silica consider this message as the environmental information and this uh, message is put inside the diatom the diatom is our uh, silica cell wall so what we do uh, we use uh, diatom to infer the past environmental condition so how for example uh, we we studied this uh, uh, lake on uh, this uh, plateau lake so imagine like this is today's picture uh, we have uh, water and uh, a certain environmental condition and then we there are certain type of diatom living here if you want to go back 200 years before or 500 years before or 1000 years before are like 5000 years before we don't know what was the water quality condition what was the diatom living there since diatoms are made up of silica cell wall so this the the cell wall uh, the rim, uh, the uh, the cell wall get preserved in the sediment so what we did is like we went to this lake and we uh, dig a pit of 200 meter so in the lake when uh, you know the it get the sediment get accumulated one above the other so we get the entire uh, 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 section of the sediment which will tell about the uh, diatom community living past at the same time there were other groups of organisms who are also living but they all they don't get preserved that much but in diatom since it's a silica cell wall the preservation is great so then we dated this uh, entire uh, cell uh, entire uh, sediment uh, for 2 meter it was around 8000 years old so far we know the uh, history of this lake from diatoms through last <clears throat> uh, 8000 years so uh, what is a, a great uh, one striking message we get is like you know if you see this um, uh, this uh, green color and you pay attention to the green color and uh, red color so this green color is uh, one particular uh, species of diatom mm -hmm. Uh, this diatom is there throughout the uh, history of last 8,000 years in this lake. But this was never been there. But recently, only for the last, you know, 1,000 years, this diatom appearing in the lake. So this might be attributing to the intervention of humans uh, to this lake, brought this uh, particular diatom. Uh, we did a... Um, uh, and apart from that, you can also see like, you know, when was the high rainfall uh, air, uh, time and when was, uh, you know, no rain or like, you know, a period of aridity. So that also we can uh, tell using the uh, diatom. Similarly, um, uh, recently we published one study from uh, uh, Ladakh region. So the same uh, idea of taking sediments of uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, from a uh, old uh, lake from uh, Ladakh region, so we can tell uh, you know, uh, or for the last four thousand years, how the climate condition changed uh, from uh, different uh, uh, in terms of rainfall, in terms of temperature, uh, using diatoms in this uh, paper, which recently published in uh, P three. <coughs> Apart from uh, active uh, you know academic research on uh, diatom we also use diatom as an environmental educational tool so we find um, diatom have a potential to convey a lot of things so we have this program called uh, sim river which is available in uh, hindi kannada marathi and tamil uh, 
Um, so it's focused uh, between eighth to 10th standard students on um, uh, how to use uh, diatoms as an environmental indicator. So in this program, uh, it's available. I have put a screenshot of a different language, what we have here. So there are there is a, a, a river, you can go and collect samples, and then you can pollute the river and then see uh, how the diatom community changes over time. So this, uh, so this is the uh, classroom scenario. Uh, basically, kids are enjoying identifying diatom in this game. So this video, we uh, this interaction is in a school from near Banana. So uh, during this interaction with the school kids, we also do a uh, we give a, a small survey form before this uh, using Sim River and after using the Sim River. So basically, uh, what we are trying to see is like what is the impact of uh, what is the uh, uh, impact of this program in their uh, uh, thinking and uh, things like that. So before this, uh, so this yellow color means these words are used together and then red color means these words are used together, green color and then red, blue color. So before uh, they have more uh, general terms and when we see after they have more, little bit more technical and terms related to uh, uh, cleaning and treatment, awareness, promotion, sewage treatment plant, so these kind of words started appearing in their uh, uh, survey. And uh, recently also we started using this, uh, another wonderful tool called Phonescope, uh, which is a uh, pocket uh, friendly in terms of uh, money, in terms of size. So you, uh, you can connect this with any of your uh, cell phone and then you can take uh, pictures. And uh, these, uh, in some of our school program, the uh, students have uh, drawn a different diagram using the uh, full scope. So uh, what is the relevance of diatom to my everyday life? Uh, diatom are one of the potential biofuel uh, producer, like diatoms can make a lot of lipids, which is having a potential to be converted into biofuel which is also implemented in uh, many uh, uh, countries and uh, <laughs> there is another thing called diatomaceous earth it is nothing but like you know these are like fossilized remains of diatom so as i mentioned uh, these uh, diatom once they die they go and settle because it's made up of silica cell wall so it get accumulated over a period of time and like you see the size of this diatomaceous earth by seeing the size of this truck, you can get an idea like, you know, how deep this place might be. Mm -hmm. And when we um, uh, mine them, they're like, uh, you know, powder. And when we look into the scanning electron microscope, you will see this uh, fragments of diatom. So uh, in Japan, uh, this, uh, uh, what happened is this, uh, what you see is a big, uh, like sedimentary, it's like kind of sedimentary rock. So they will cut this rock into square and then make a barbecue uh, uh, station kind of thing. So you can use uh, this and then uh, they are made up of uh, the the diatom, diatom is earth are made up of small fragments of diatom and these diatom fragments have minute pores. So these pores are used to uh, filter the beer uh, or any, any chemicals uh, from the factory. So even any uh, micro level dust or anything can be removed uh, from the uh, uh, those liquid <clears throat> and another one great contribution of uh, um, diatoms to the uh, global sciences uh, a Nobel Prize so you might be wondering like what how these are connected so the Nobel's um, uh, Nobel uh, uh, he uh, invented this um, dynamite. So initially he tried to uh, do with uh, uh, mixing nitroglycerin, which is like a liquid explosive 
with the many uh, solid like charcoal and things like that nothing what then he mixed it with the uh, diatomaceous earth so then it become more stable so, so they can transport from one place to another place and then this brought uh, noble family lot of money selling uh, dynamite and he want to give that money back to the society so the noble foundation was made with the uh, money which they earned uh, from mainly from selling uh, diatomaceous earth so um, when i say whenever you find whenever every year when we announce nobel prize so uh, you have to remember that you know there is a, there are these millions of diatoms behind this uh, nobel prize and <clears throat> apart from that like they also recently have uh, diatoms have lot of uh, industrial like uh, you know, biomedical applications like you know uh, they are used as a hemostatic agent for to control the blood uh, loss and they are also used in uh, tissue engineering um, for developing bones and other things and uh, most of us are uh, aware of this um, uh, fish tab fish oil tablet they call fish cod liver tablet actually fish don't produce the omega 3 fatty acid the diatom or the other algae they produce the omega 3 fatty acid and the fish consume diatoms and they accumulate it and keep it so uh, when you take a, a omega 3 fatty acid uh, 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 it comes from uh, diatom so recently uh, there are also vegan omega 3 fatty acid which which will not use the fish from culturing diatom you can extract the omega 3 fatty acids so and uh, uh, finally i want to tell about this uh, uh, how diatoms are used in you know completely a different uh, context like uh, so there are these neolithic potteries from the archaeological sites you get this pot and these pots are made up of clay and the clay must be from a lake or a river sediment so this that clay will have like diatom fragments so by studying the diatoms in this neolithic pottery uh, the authors found like you know whether these parts are of locally made by them or like it was imported from somewhere and it's made from a freshwater source so all this uh, information they found <coughs> excuse me so um, again uh, they found uh, it's used in archaeology uh, uh, at multiple folds so with this i conclude my talk uh, i thank the uh, organizers of outside in serious and uh, bangalore life science cluster and samir uh, and the other organizers for inviting me and uh, all this works were possible by funding from different agency and my my institute agarkar research institute and my students so i want to end this talk with a quote if you can read thank your teacher if you can breathe uh, thank the diatom hi samir yeah. thank you thank you karthik for that very uh, informative lecture so we have a few questions yes. so there is a question by rahul what is the latest classification of diatoms based on which recent diatom study is being carried out is there any specific or latest classification of diatoms like other groups of algae okay so um uh this uh, the we don't know much about the uh, we don't know the entire spectrum of uh, uh diatom and uh, uh what happened uh, uh what we know are like you know bits and pieces of diatom and last 100 150 years uh, this being a little bit technical question i am answering a little bit technically um so we don't know uh, much about the diatom uh, diversity so what uh, i'll just tell with a simple example so we know the number of species of fish and number of species of diatoms are almost same i think 50000 60000 around that and number of genera in diatom are 1200 and number of genera in fishes are like i think 
so like you know we don't have uh, really a good understanding of what are the current number of groups under diatoms so as on today um, anybody who is studying diatom as a subject they can use diatom based classification in diatom based we have the most recent classification is given diatom based dot org you can go there you will see the diatom tree of life like you know what are the different group and each group so we have given classification from uh, out and up to species each species which is given so uh, you can follow that that uh, one uh, okay i hope that answered your question uh, there is a second question are there any harmful diatoms yes uh, there are harmful diatoms uh, one is uh, 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 Pseudomyxia. Uh, they they can form uh, blooms in in temperate uh, marine environment. So these blooms can kill uh, uh, fishes and can cause lot. They can cause lot of economic loss. So this is one uh, one uh, harmful diatom. And there is another other diatom. Uh, it's also known as Didymos finia, which is can grow in fresh water, like you know, in in huge number. Uh, they can even clog the dam like even they can grow like anything it happened to in many places in new zealand so these are the two known uh, harmful diatom apart from that like you know in our normal drinking water also we have lot of diatoms will be there and it will not it's not pathogen or anything like that uh, there is one more question how do diatoms colonize aerophytic aerophytic habitats so uh, uh, diatoms are uh, carried by wind so and so they can uh, uh, through wind they can uh, move from one uh, place to another place so that could be the only source of uh, uh, aerophytic habitat diatom and the the concept of aerophytic diatom itself at very it's very recent like maybe like some last 5 6 years only people started looking into uh, aerophytic uh, diatom community okay and the last question here is are there any genetic modifications done in diatoms to exploit the secondary metabolites yeah uh, up, uh until recently we have uh, i think six or seven species of diatom we know the entire uh, the whole genome and uh, people are trying to find out how they can be so efficient in producing so much oxygen and fixing so much carbon dioxide and then Uh, understanding their own like lipid production in general lipid production and then other metabolites so uh, people are using uh, there are particular two species like telosocera sudonana and uh, uh, cyclotella pheodactylum um, uh, uh, another one pheodactylum trunket so these two uh, species are used as a lab guinea pig and uh, there are a lot of genetic work is happening these days okay uh, any more questions um i don't think that anybody has put any more in uh, if anybody would like to raise their hand and ask a question they are free to do that um so um i have a question uh, that you know you mentioned a lot of um artwork and things that are you know made with diatoms so uh, what are the tools they use under the microscope do you happen to know so basically um this this uh, artwork is uh, more than 152 150 year old artwork so uh, i have seen one person doing this in japan uh he is using uh uh this uh, small micro manipulator kind of thing which is made up of a uh, pig's eyelash and um, um uh so it's a different eyelashes of different animal this eyelashes are attached to a stick and they were under the microscope you put one diatom and then remove the others and uh, that's what it's done and maybe recently uh, i don't think anybody using like professional micro manipulation system what we use in the laboratory experiments like that 
Okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering because you mentioned that it's quite an old thing, right? So, you know, how are they doing it? Because it's obviously micro, uh, microscopic. So, uh, one thing I have seen is like uh, one of my uh, collaborators' uh, wife, uh, she's, a, she's a school teacher, but she her hobby is trying to do this. Like, so she have a, a wide range of uh, 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 pig's eyelash size from small to like a huge one and then like she for a different picking and moving she used these eyelashes to to <laughs> make these arrangements i'm sure it takes a lot of patience yeah, uh, yeah. okay uh, so i don't think uh, we've got a couple more questions Please. so uh, samir yeah. maybe you can yeah. go back so um, there is this question by ivy how are diatoms <coughs> used as bio indicators of polluted water Okay, so um, uh, in, in during this talk, like in you know, multiple places, I mentioned that uh, diatom, any given environment have a uh, set of diatoms. For example, like, you know, we take a let's say twenty kilometer stretch of a river. The river originates and then river goes to the uh, ocean. So in twenty kilometer, this is happening. Just imagine. So where there is a river originates, where you have like you know, uh, water coming out of a spring, you have. very less nutrient not much salt it's a clean water so then river that stream comes down and people started using it and then some agricultural runoff comes so the the water quality water chemistry get changed and then go further and then when it goes close to the sea there is a salt water coming up so it become saline so all this environment have a different salt concentration so different concentr different salt concentration sub Put only a particular group of diatom at each salt concentration. I'm just telling only one parameter. Now we have another one. Nutrients are there, and the temperature are there, and then habitat availability are there. So all these things, it's at like you know ten, twenty parameter trying to make one um, one particular uh, set of diatom. Uh, to put it in a very simple raw way, you know when we look for a house to rent. we want to close to railway station and we want to have a shop we want to have a good neighborhood we want to have park for playing in the evening so this is like all this thing we consider and then check so all these parameter determine a, like you know uh, one set of diatom community so at that place you will get like you know 20 30 species and based on that we will use them as a water quality indicator of environment and uh, uh, yeah so uh, that's it like okay and besides cell wall patterns are there any other ways to identify different diatom species so initially people used to do this with uh, even chloroplast structure so you can uh, uh, find you can find uh, identify diatom uh, using chloroplast structure also but uh, i think it's very difficult to do that like it's not possible so only way is until unless we clean the diatom I mean like we digest with a, a silica uh, digest with a nitric acid or uh, any acid strong acids it's not possible to identify diatom to a species level okay are there any more questions from the attendees should we check in the youtube there is no question there uh, yeah no questions are there i think uh, people it might be an unfamiliar topic for most people ah, okay there is one more uh, as for diatom taxonomy for proper identification is size diminution a must yeah definitely i think uh, we have some diatomist here <laughs> so uh, definitely so i i didn't mention about this part like um, Uh, when diatom reproduce by uh, sexual and asexual reproduction so in asexual reproduction when i, I mention like it is like a soap box so you know when we have a soap box it's like this like you know this is like soap box structure you have a soap inside so in asexual reproduction what happen is soap box will come little away and this become a lid and make a, a, a small a base for this so initially the mother cell was like this the two daughter one is same size as a uh, mother 
and another one is little smaller and this goes further smaller and smaller and smaller so in order to identify any diatom we need to understand the entire size range so in in a, in a favorable environment if we find a diatom of 20 micron there is a high chance we we will find either 40 micron or 10 micron to cover the entire size series so size uh, understanding uh, a size domination series is must for diatom identification okay any more questions Yeah, we have one question on uh, YouTube. Uh, they, uh, so I think this person only joined after, uh, uh, you know, you discussed uh, how they are an indicator for water pollution. So probably, as you mentioned, there are many different uh, parameters that are checked, right? Um, and, and different diatom species are present uh, depending on the those uh, water pollutants and things like that um i guess uh, it was not clear to them maybe they need to go back and watch later on youtube yeah uh if they join late yeah i i in case um, uh, any i think uh, the person who asked here rahul bose uh, if you want more details or any help on the item uh, you can contact me by email also it's diatomist at gmail.com so you can uh, write to me, no problem. Okay, uh, I guess we don't have any more questions, but everybody is curious about how they are an indicator for the environment, I guess. But uh, I think you had mentioned some of the uses humans have for diatoms, right? Other than oxygen production, but um, applications of diatoms, uh, what are the funny ones you would say? that nobody would expect? Uh, since, uh, uh, since it was meant for high school student, I didn't put this. Uh, diatoms are used in forensics also. So death by drowning is last 200 years across the globe, whether the person uh, died by uh, real drowning or somebody uh, you know, killed and threw the uh, victim in the lake, it was or a river or a stream. It was confirmed only by uh, diatom test. So, by internal organs, they check whether there is a presence of diatoms or not. So, um, uh, this is one thing. <coughs> not funny means it's like it's like unexpected use of diatoms. Uh, in in one thing, I would say, and. Um, until recently, we our um, toothpaste also used to have diatomaceous earth because of its abrasive nature of companies. But now, in India, we don't have a good quality diatomaceous earth. <clears throat> so, uh, this toothpaste uh, industries are consuming a lot of diatomaceous earth. So, it's banned few, uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And... Uh, Sometime our Multani Miti will also have diatoms because it's also kind of a, a sedimentary, like sediments, so that will also have uh, diatoms. Uh, so I guess there are a lot of uh, unexpected places that you find diatoms as well, as you mentioned so many times uh, in the talk, like you gave us all these examples. Um, so uh, just thank you. And uh, Samir, you can probably uh, uh, share what's happening next week. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Karthik. So again, the importance here is that even if these animals, uh, these organisms, sorry, these plants are very small, they are still very critical to our ecosystem health. So the most important part of our air oxygen, if, if diatoms are not there or if their diversity is disturbed, it can impact us also. And we don't know it, unfortunately. So thanks a lot, Karthik, for giving this very informative talk. Next week, we'll have a talk by Professor Rajiv Raghavan on subterranean or underground water fishes uh, of Western Ghats. It will be at 11 a.m. on the 27th of December. So I hope to see you all there again. Thank you.
Thanks, and I sir. thank also the members of uh, Outside In, Pavitra, for organizing this series of lectures. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Thank you.